In this video, we're going to discuss the audio system of the CX350. You have basically two input systems. You have the XLR ports, one and two, or you have the onboard microphone. You can choose which of these four inputs, left, right, one, or two, get mixed into the camera's two audio channels. It doesn't really have left and right. We refer to them as channel one and channel two. You can mix and match. You can make one input come from the onboard microphone and one from a shotgun. That might be a way you want to go if you're doing like a stand-up news interview or something like that. Maybe you're the reporter. And so you have a shotgun mic pointed at you, but you also have this microphone, this onboard microphone enabled to capture ambient sound, to use as a scratch track maybe. You never know what might happen at a, at a live event. You might want to have that available. Another way to configure the camera, maybe you want to have a shotgun microphone here and a wireless receiver on channel two. So maybe you're doing a situation where you're doing interviews or convention coverage or something like that, and you have a roving reporter who has a wireless microphone with them, maybe a handheld that they can, you know, do their own commentary and then hand it to the interviewee. But you also want to have the shotgun microphone on here so that you always have a separate directable audio source. Because what if, what if the handheld microphone battery dies, you know? What if the person forgets to hand it over like, what do you think, Bill? And they're still holding it here. You know, lots of things could happen. So you might want to have a backup system here. So you might put a, a shotgun microphone here, route it into this XLR, and then have your wireless system maybe attached here or maybe attached to the shoe and going into channel two. One way that we do all the time is when we're doing a sit down interview and we only have the one microphone, we'll run that microphone onto both audio channels. So we can put it into input one or into input two, but then when we assign the channels, we can tell channel one to go to input one and channel two to also go to input one. Why would you do that? Well, first of all, it gives you, you know, even audio going into your ears. But second of all, you can set one channel lower. What if the person suddenly gets very loud? Or what if they get very quiet? You might have one channel louder than the other one. And maybe if they get very loud, your loud channel clips, but your quieter channel will protect. Or you can establish the limiter to help you protect those channels. Or you can establish one channel as manually controlled with the dial here and dial in exactly the level you want. You can set the other channel to automatic control. Another way of protecting yourself in case something suddenly gets out of range, something gets way too loud or, or way too quiet for you, that automatic level control might pick in and carry you through. So we'll talk first about the channels themselves. We go into the audio door here and you have two switches. These let you determine what type of input you're sending to each of these inputs. So if you have a microphone coming in on input one, hooked up to XLR one, then we can go in here and we can set input one to microphone level, or we can set it to plus 48V. Plus 48V is for phantom power. Sometimes microphones need cameras to supply power to them. Sometimes the microphones are powered by themselves. If you have a dynamic microphone, that really shouldn't even have power going to it. So you would set it on mic. If you have a condenser microphone, that needs phantom power. So we would then set down to 48V, plus 48V. That means microphone with 48 volts of phantom power supply. Or if you have a self-powered microphone, maybe a microphone that has its own battery in it, like an electric condenser, you don't want to send phantom power to that because it's supplying its own power. So then we would just set it on mic level. You can do that for input one or input two. This is not the audio channels, these are the inputs. Then you determine what input goes to what channel. So on channel one, we can have the input be the left onboard microphone, or it can be input one, the XLR, or it can be XLR two. And you can set the same for channel two. So theoretically, you could have input one go to channel two, and input two go to channel one, you can mix and match however you want. Just understand that you have two recording tracks and four potential inputs. How do you map the inputs onto those tracks? That's a question. Now, once you have it mapped, once you have the inputs configured and you have the channels configured, how do you control the audio levels? One of two ways. 
either automatically controlled or manually with the potentiometers here where you can dial in the exact level that you want. The automatic control is set through the menus. So we go to the audio menu into Rec CH Level and then you can choose for channel 1 or channel 2 whether you want it to be automatic or manual. The fact that it's done individually on the channel, the recording channel, and not on the input is kind of cool because that means that Again, if you have just the one microphone, maybe just one wireless microphone coming in into input two, then you can set channel one to automatic level, channel two to manual level. The same input will be treated differently on each channel. Another thing that you can do is you can put on a low cut filter. Low cut filter is designed to pass the high frequency. So if we have the entire frequency range here, and we have, you know, treble and alto and really high frequencies up high. And we have the bass and the tenor, you know, low frequencies down low. The low cut filter chops out some of the lower frequencies, just ignores them. This can be very helpful if you're in a scenario where there's a truck outside of your where you're doing an interview. There's a big giant truck that's just rumbling low and, and idling and just that can be really annoying on your soundtrack. That low cut filter might be enough to erase that truck entirely. It still keeps the voice, but it erases those low frequencies. Or another example is if you're in a very windy environment and you're using the onboard microphone or you're using a microphone that doesn't have a proper wind sock on it. Wind, when it hits that microphone, makes that horrible, rustly, rumbly sound. A lot of that can be erased by putting on the low cut filter. Not all of it. You'll still have some wind noise, but it'll be easier and cleaner to hear. Times when you don't want to use the low cut filter is whenever you don't have to. If you don't have to use it, don't put it on because it does chop out some frequencies. And so, for example, if you're recording music, you'll miss a lot of the music. If you're recording voices, you miss some of the tonal range of the voice. It makes voices sound thinner. Sometimes it sounds better than having whatever that low rumble is, but if you don't need to compensate for something like that, don't put that on. Now, the thing you can do is you can put a limiter on. Now, a limiter is designed to, when it hears an audio level getting too loud, it clamps down on that audio level to keep it within range to prevent it from distorting. That's a really nice backup to have. The limiter can be set individually. One channel can have it, the other channel not. It's a nice thing. If you're using like a professional mixer, you have a sound person on the shoot and they have their own mixer and they're routing the microphones to their mixer and then sending their output to the camera, then don't put the limiter on here. They'll take care of limiting and, and you'll want the, the pure unmodified signal coming into the camera. But if the microphones are going directly into the camera, limiter can save you sometimes when things get too loud. You know, if you don't have time, sometimes when stuff happens really quickly, you, you, you got to think and grab the audio dial and try to turn down, but it's already happened. That limiter can maybe bail you out for a second before that happens. One last thing on the audio system. You know, it would be wonderful if we lived in a world where line level meant that a signal was at line level and when you plugged in, it just worked or mic level and mic and they just worked. But that's not the world we live in. There are two different standards for line level. There's zero dB and plus four dB. So when you take in a line level signal, sometimes you'll find it's hotter than you wanted. It. It's, it's too loud and you're having to turn the potentiometers down too far to compensate, to bring that into range. Sometimes you find it's too quiet and you're having to really gain up on the potentiometers. If the audio is really off when the, when the pots are pretty much at dead center, top dead center, then you may want to adjust the sensitivity of the input. So go into the audio menu and look at input settings and you'll see there that you can adjust input one or input two. You can set the line level or you can also set the mic level because microphones, some mics are more sensitive than others. And sometimes you can't get a good match. If you're finding that you really need to adjust these levels, like, you know, the mic is so loud that I got to turn this thing all the way down here before the audio sounds okay. Well, that's not right. You have a mismatch in the input level and, and what the camera's expecting. So adjust the input level in the menus to where you get a more even proper range. 
I hope that helps. I hope that explains more about how the audio works and, and helps you to understand how you want to connect it and configure it. Stay tuned to this channel for even more information about the CX350. Thanks for watching. Panasonic.